Well, good morning to Hope Community Church. We're so grateful to have everybody here today, everybody out in Facebook land as well. And we're excited today because we have Pastor Gerald Jacobs here today, and uh, he's going to bring the word, and I'm excited about that, what he has brought for us today. But right now, let's just turn our attentions to lifting up the holy name of Jesus today. So how do we do that? Let's stand and worship. You are the only way, my Savior, my Savior lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. Now I stand on what He did. My Savior, my Savior lives. Every day a brand new chance to say, Jesus, You are the only way. I know that my 
of thee. Make this your prayer. Here am I, all of me. Take my life, it's all for thee. Here am I.
Heavenly Father, today we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are the potter and we are the clay. You mold, you shape, you perfect us into everything that you want us to be, Father. So, Lord, we say to you today, we want to cooperate with you, Lord Jesus, today. Do in and through us, God, what you want to do in this place. Father, we want to cooperate with you in the spirit. So, Lord, speak to our hearts, speak to our minds in this place today as we lift up your holy name, Jesus. We thank you and we praise you. In Christ's name, amen. Let's greet one another. How about that? I'm glad we're good at the fellowship. <laughs> we'll, we'll be doing a little bit more of that later. Thanks to Julie and Twyla, we'll be having coffee hour later, and we can continue to meet Pastor Jarrell and his family and uh, get a chance to talk to the people you didn't get to talk to yet. So we'll have refreshments. Thank you for that. Um, Kathy is here in the back. Get your script orders to her. Just a reminder, it's not too soon to get those C's certificates for your Easter candy. Um, tithes and offering. There is the plate in the back where we've been keeping it, over by the sound booth. You can donate there, online, through bill pay, through Tithely. We'll, you can mail a check, whatever you want to do. We're making it easy for you. Um, the, Central California Classes Stated Session is going to be a month from now on Friday and Saturday, March 10th and 11th. So anyone that wants to attend is willing and able to attend, you're welcome. There will be representatives from each of the churches, but anybody, you don't have to be on the consistory or anything, anybody can come, so you're welcome. Um, next week, Eric Yang will be our guest pastor, and we'll be waiting to hear what he has to say. 
Um, we're going to have an announcement from the pastor search team in just a second. I just wanted to say a big thank you to Carol and Julie and Steve for all of their hard work that they have been praying and seeking God's plan and will. And they've been working very hard mornings, evenings, meetings, Zoom, Facebook, you know, email, text. They've been really spending a lot of time trying to seek who our next pastor will be, and I know they've been working very hard, so give them a little bit of a appreciation when you get a chance. <laughs> and they're going to come up and give you an update on where we stand in this search. Do you need a mic? I know, they're, they're all shy and reserved and... and they're all good poker players. They never tell us anything. But today, we're going to get an announcement. Today's yeah. different. So we're glad to change the story a bit, up a bit for you. Um, for um, almost a year now, well, not a year, because it's been, I think, sometime last summer, we started doing um, monthly updates, and then we shifted to every two weeks. And um, we're just really pleased to be able to share a different story with you in a little more detail. So um, we have been talking to a candidate very seriously for a bit now and just really pleased with who God's brought for us to um, put forward to the consistory. Um, the search process, it's been such an honor to be front row seat of how God's working in the very small, minute moments and to the very big ones. And um, it's just we can't we keep going on over and over the stories about how God continues to show up in this search and for his care for our church and care for us as a search team and for our candidate as well. So we have put forward a candidate to the consistory and they have put out a call for a pastor, our next pastor. So um, we have that all in the works right now. There's a lot of details we're working through with the classes, um, with consistory, with the candidate themselves. So we're not going to give you any more information. You have to come back next week for that. Um, next week we are preparing a lot more detail for you. We just have a, a few things to get together first before we start um, uh opening that up, but we're super excited about it, um, being able, of course, and how God's been working on this situation, and, um, and how he's been working with us and for us. Um, it's been fantastic to watch all that, so um, anything else you guys want to say? I just want to thank everybody for their prayers. Um, <laughs> I guess it's an emotional time. We're getting close. Um, God has been in control of this whole thing, and it's been your prayers and keeping us in prayer and us as a, as a community here seeking God's will, and he has just come through amazingly. He loves, just shows that he loves his children. This is his church, and he's got, you know, the next pastor lined up, so I just want to thank you for the support you guys have given us and all the prayers during this whole time, which has been almost a year, right? <laughs> For us, getting together has been almost a year. We're going to go through withdrawals, I think, right? I mean, what will we do weekly, you know? I'm sure we'll find something, but, but I, we've said enough for <laughs> Corey. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. We've been waiting for that for months. So I would like to welcome everyone here this morning and those of you at Facebook land, we welcome you too and hope to see you soon. There are several concerns this morning that we need to pray for, so let's get together and come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we just praise you for all that you are doing here at Hope Community Church. Lord, your presence is always here, and you're always with us. So we just thank you, especially for the search team, all the work that they have done, Lord, and just ha knowing that you were with them all the way. Lord, we still keep praying for Carrie 
She had two surgeries this week, and after the second one, she's doing a lot better. So, but she's got a long way to go. So we just pray that you'll just put your healing hand on her and that she'll feel your presence. And Lord, we still need to pray for Nancy. She's still going through dialysis, and hopefully someday soon she might be able to have a kidney transplant. So, Lord, we just pray for that, and we know that you're in it. And, Lord, this morning as I was leaving for church, one of my neighbors came over, and she says, Are you going to church? And I said, Yes. And she says, Would you please pray for me? I don't know what her concern is, but Lord, you know what it is. So we just pray for her also. And we have a lady that's been out here at the church. Her name is Sarah. Lord, I don't know what's going on with her, but she needs prayer. And we just ask you to keep her safe and to watch over her. Also, we need to pray for the people in Turkey and Syria with the devastating earthquake, Lord. They're still finding some people that are alive, so that's just awesome. And Lord, be with all the rescue people and the first correspondents, Lord, because they're in danger also, so we just pray for them. And it's good to see that out of such a bad situation, Lord, so much going on there that people have come together and that they are able to work together. So that is a good thing that come out of something bad. We also just ask you to just be with those in the Ukraine, Lord. There's still just no end in sight there. And we just pray that each and every one of us will keep those people in prayer, Lord, because the more of us that talk to you, the more people will be aware of you. And Lord, be with Pastor Gerald this morning as he brings the message that you have put on his heart. And now let's say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And don't there's probably prayers that need to be done for people that have problems that we're not aware of. But we do know that God is in control and that he knows what they are. And at this time, it's my honor to introduce Minister Gerald Jacobs. Gerald Jacobs, in January of 2008, announced his calling to proclaim, proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Under the leadership of Pastor Robbie Robinson in August of 2009, Minister Jacobs was licensed and in May of 2010, ordained at the St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church in Oakland, California, where he served faithfully as a youth pastor. Minister Jacobs is a student at Numia Technology Seminary, Minister Jacobs is being used by God to proclaim the gospel and his devotion on the ministry he is revealed by his service. And now let's hear from Pastor Gerald. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for he is truly worthy to be praised. Good morning, Hope. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me again. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, Lord Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you for your spirit that is in this place. Father, we ask now that you will forgive us of sin aware and unaware to our members. Father, we ask that you will come in this place and throw your weight around, O oh God. 
Lord, touch their eyes that they might see. Lord, touch their ears that they might hear. Lord, touch their hearts that they might, one, come asking, what must I do to be saved? It is in the name of Jesus we do pray. And all that believe say amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord found in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. Starting at the first verse. <coughs> Excuse me. Jeremiah 18 and one and you will find these words. The words which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house. There he was making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the words of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Says the Lord, look as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in my hands. O house of Israel, the word of God for the people of God in the presence of God. I want to use for a topic this morning, lessons from the potter's house. Lessons from the potter's house. It was so amazing how we were in worship and every song that they sang was a song leading into my message, saying how we want the Lord to use us, make us, mold us, and do what he will with us, but we have to be willing and yielding vessels. Here in the book of Jeremiah, God uses many images to describe his relationship to his people. He speaks of the shepherd and the sheep relationship, the husband and the wife relationship, a father and the children's relationships, just, just to name a few. All of these relationships, believers, all of these relationships are wonderful, and it teaches us many valuable lessons about life, about ourselves, and about our Lord. However, while we as believers are sheep, we are uh, protected uh, uh, by the provision of the shepherd. As a wife, we are loved without condition by the husband. And like a child, children, we are consistently under the father's loving watch care. Uh, there is another aspect of our lives that need to be focused or factored into the equation this morning. After all, Jesus did not save us just to, uh, so we could uh, go to heaven and avoid hell. He saved our souls so that we might be actively engaged in his service on this earth. Now, if we if we as believers, if we as believers are to be his servants, we're going to need his power, his dunamis uh, to get the job done. Never let a child of God think that they can do it on their own. Consider uh John 15 and 51, it makes our dependence upon Jesus crystal clear. John 50, 15 and 51 says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Uh, therefore, perhaps one of the greatest uh, uh, put portraits of God and his people is the picture of the potter and the clay. In these brief verses, we can see uh, the plans of the heavenly potter on display. Let's take a few minutes on this morning uh, today as we look at these verses together to consider the subject lessons from the potter's house. Which brings me 
to my first point, the potter and his mission, the potter's intentions. The potter has a singular purpose. His plans to take the clay from the clays uh, produced a, a vessel. He, he wants to make the vessel that will uh, reap uh, the profit that, that will be found useful and will bring honor unto him. This is God's intention for us as well. He excels in taking old worthless clay and transforming it by grace into a vessel of honor and glory. He takes those things which people call garbage, scrap, trash, rubbish, hogwash, rummage, junk, slop, lit, litter, litter, leftovers, and turns them into vessels of honor. Jesus uh, saves the sinner by his grace, and then he brings them uh, to a process of changing their vile sinner into a vessel that will produce profit to the kingdom of God. Mm. Uh, God is interested in taking the worst he can find and changing it into the best that heaven has to offer. Not only must we uh, look at the potter's intentions, but we must look at the potter's ingredients. In order to accomplish, my God, in order to accomplish this lofty goal, uh, the potter must work with materials that leave much to be desired. Clay, as it is found in the ground, is not suitable for use. Mm -mm. No, sir. It is, in other words, the clay, as it is taken from the ground, is worthless. It uh, must be transformed into a usable state. And it is in the process that it takes time uh, and, and energy on the part of the potter. This is the perfect uh, uh, portion uh, of those who are lost in sin. We are worthless uh, to God in the natural condition. Uh, but however, he is able to see the vessel that can become what, what the vessel can become. Therefore, he's being uh, the process that will bring us to a place of usefulness. We must understand in, in natural conditions, uh, we are not useful to some of those who see us in, in, in our sin sick stage. But in God's eyes, after he shapes and molds us, places us in a, a useful honor. He be, places us in a place where that we are useful for the kingdom. Come to ask a question this morning. Do you remember when you were unuseful to God, when you were in your sin sick stage and God came in your room and he changed your heart and he changed your mind and he changed your talk? The song says it was early one morning, just about the break of day, Jesus came into my room and he washed my sins away. I started running. I started shouting. I had no doubt about it. It was no. Nobody but the Holy Ghost we must understand when Jesus came, we were undesirable to others. But Jesus saw our potential. Jesus saw what he had already plan for us he he was keeping his promises when he he called us out of darkness into his marvelous light not only must we look at the potter's intentions not only must we look at the potter's ingredients but we must look at the potter's instruments the potter uses se several instruments uh, to bring the clay to the place where it is usable the first thing the potter brings to his workstation uh, the potter brings a shovel ah uh, this is a tool he uses to dig clay from the earth my god 
This is a picture of the Spirit of God who comes to where we are in our sin and speaks to us and convicts us in his power to draw us to Jesus. Consider John 16, 7 through 11. Uh, praise the Lord uh, for his conviction and his conversion of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says it best when he's speaking to Saul on the road to Damascus. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. Acts 9 and 5, not only uh, do he bring uh, a shovel uh, to his workstation, uh, but Steve, he brings a mallet. A mallet after the clay has been cleansed and processed. It is in his place on the table, and then it is beaten with a wooden mallet. The potter does this to remove any air bubbles that might be trapped in the clay. If he doesn't, uh, the air bubbles will form a pocket and the product will be weak in spots that cause the vessel to be fragile and un usable. This is the picture uh, of trials and uh, calamities and chastisement of life that tend to work against the shape that you, that God uses the image of Jesus Christ in 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. We may not like the pounding of the mallet, but our sole purpose is to make us more useful to God. I come to tell you this morning, uh, the beating must may not be the greatest, but it is purposeful. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. Uh, we don't like to be beat on uh, by God, but it is purposeful. We must understand that in order, my grandmother always just said, in order to get to where God wants you to get to, we must go through uh, where God, we must go through what God wants us to go through. So we must understand that the beating is necessary it may not be pleasant it may not be great but it is necessary do you remember when the God he he took you and he he knocked you down off your high horse he knocked you down to the lowest place in life he knocked you down uh, with your face to the to the to the ground uh, pleading and and praying unto God Lord save my life Lord change my mind Lord move in my my way. Do you remember when the Lord knocked you down? He, he beat you. He said on the road of Damascus, uh, Saul had an encounter with God. God had to knock him down to the lowest state in the, where he was. He had to knock him off his high horse and knock him to the ground to get Saul's attention. And when he hit the ground, they said he looked up and said, Lord, is it you? Do you remember the time when the Lord knocks you down and all you could do is turn up and say, Lord, is it you? The beating is not tasteful, but it's necessary. We must understand not only must we look at that he brings a shovel uh, to his workstation. Not only does he be a mallet to the workstation to bring out the impurities, but uh, the potter brings the will. The wheel is a large wheel, usually made of stone and mounted upon a shaft that sits in a stone socket. Coming out of the large stone is an upright shaft extending more than three feet uh, from another. The, the smaller wheel mounted on top, the potter is using his feet. Mm to spin the large wheel, the lower wheel. As he does, the upper wheel begins to turn as he pedals uh, with the lower wheel. And, and this is where the clay is placed on uh, the wheel. My God, uh, as the clay turns, uh, the potter will place his hands upon it and, and, and shape it in according to his wheel. Mm. Again, the wheel is symbolic to the circumstances in the situations of life. Uh, the wheel is the image of things of this world that causes us to, to spiral out of control. Uh, the wheel is the calamities and the things of life uh, that causes us to not see the wheel of God, that, that causes us to go out of control. The wheel is the thing that, that causes us 
just uh, to feel that we cannot make it through life. The will is that thing that keeps us from getting closer and nearer to God. But I come to tell somebody this morning that the will is purposeful. The will is purposeful because on that wheel is a foundation. Mm. On that wheel, uh, eh, we're, we're in a good space uh, because we must understand if we're on the wheel, we're in the potter's hands. Mm. Uh, we must understand not only uh, does a potter bring a shovel uh, to his workstation, not only does the potter bring a mallet mm -hmm, to his workstation, not only does the potter bring the wheel uh, to his workstation, but the potter brings his hands. While the clay spins around on the wheel. It is never out of contact with the potters with his hands. He is in constant contact molding and shaping and bringing the clay along through his loving guidance. If we uh, here were to ever be removed from the potter's hands. Clay would spin right off the wheel and, and would be lost. Therefore, he remains there. And, and when he remains there, he holds the clay in his hand to bring along until it becomes what he desires it to be. Mm. The child of God is never fears that the Lord will walk out on us and leave us on the spinning wheel out of control. We must understand no matter how fast the wheel spins, no matter how it goes, we are still constantly in the part of sands. Come to tell someone today, uh, thank you, Holy Ghost, uh, stay on the wheel. Stay in the house and stay in the potter's hands though your life may be out of control though it may seem rough stay on the wheel stay in the house and stay in his hands not only must we understand the potter and his mission uh, but we must understand the potter and his ministry a problem with the vessel, even in the potter's hands, things can still go terribly wrong. The fault in it is with the potter, but it is with the, with the clay. There are times when even with the best care, the vessel still can get out of shape. Even though we're in the best care as believers, Things can still go wrong. Even though uh, we are walking the walk of faith. Even though we're crying loud and sparing not. Even though we're calling on the name of the Lord. Things can still go wrong. The things that we go wrong in our life does not cause us to go push away from God. But it causes us to draw to him. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Not only uh, a problem is a problem with the vessel, uh, but we must understand the perception of the potter. My God, because his hands is resting on the vessel. The potter knows instantly when problems arise. He senses the change in the clay and begins uh, taking whatever steps are necessary to correct the problems. At that moment, he takes the necessary steps to get back in usefulness. He, he takes it to get it back into a useful condition. Never think for a second that you're going to, uh, going to hide something from the Lord. We must understand that, that, that God sees all things, whether they're good or, or bad. We must uh, not only look at the, the problem with the best, so not only uh, must we look at the perception of the potter, but we must look at the patience of the potter. Even though the clay uh, is 
misshapen and deformed. It is still in the hands of God. The potter takes the marred vessel, processes it back into a lump, and begins to work on it again. Sometimes in life, we stumble and we fall. But we must understand, as believers, we're still in the potter's hand. We are still a working progress. We are still uh, able to be shaped and molded. The songwriter says, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. He says, when God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. We must understand as we go through life, we are pilgrims passing through this barren land. We are still a working progress. But one day, God is going to call us by our name. And he'll call us from labor to reward. We must understand that we are in the care of God. As we pass through this life, we must understand we're still under the shepherd's watch care. No matter what circumstances we're dealing with. No, no matter what we're dealing with with life. No, no matter oh, what the conditions may be. Sickness, uh, pain, disease. We're under the Lord's watch care. We must understand if we stay in the house and we stay on the wheel. We, and we stay in his hands. We're still in working progress. Because one day Jesus marched up a hill by the name of Calvary he was still a working progress and he when he got on the hill he took a nail in his hand he took a spikes in his feet he took a rivet in his side the song where it says he put his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died he still was a working progress he said they took him off the old rugged cross and placed him in the borrowed tomb he was there all day Saturday he was there all night, Saturday night, but early Sunday morning, he got up without power, and it's in power to walk right, power to talk right, power to live right. We must understand as believers, we're going to go through trials and tribulations. We're going to go through ups and downs. But as long as we stay in the house, alone as we stay on the wheel, and as long as we stay in the potter's hands, we're in a good place. Because all the potter wants to do is shape us, mold us, so we may be useful vessels in the kingdom of God. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, Lord Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you for your spirit that is in this place. Lord, we thank you for your word on today. Lord, we thank you that we understand that there's beatings that are necessary to make us useful to do your will and to your way. Father, so we thank you for the beating. Lord, we thank you for the pressure. Lord, we thank you for the wheel. But Lord, we sure enough thank you for your hands resting on us. Because in your hands, we are under your control. And we are yielding vessels to be used of you. So God, I ask now that you would touch us. Allow us to take this word and give it to someone else in need. And all that believe, say amen.
that is lost ever be found. Could a garden come up from this ground at all? You make beautiful things. You make beautiful things out of the dust. You make beautiful things. You make beautiful things out of us. All around, well, hope is springing up from this old ground. Out of chaos, life is being found. Beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of the dust. You make beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of us. You make beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of the thank you for allowing us to be here on today. If our hearts and minds are clear, let's look to the Lord, our Father, and our God, Lord Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we love you, Lord. We thank you for your spirit that is in this place. Thank you for your word on today, Lord, allowing us to see the message that you have for us from the potter, of God. God, we are yielding and willing vessels to be used of you, O God. God, we ask that you would allow us to leave from this place, but never from your presence. Lord, lead, guide us, and protect us. Let us uh, allow us to go to our destinations and find them safely as we left them. And all that believes, say amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. <laughs> Here am I. 